Well, there's a blast from the past. I know I've got a lot of uh, American viewers uh, on this channel, which is absolutely fantastic. And uh, there's a car some of you guys might know. I've, I've no idea. I was uh, only a little boy and across the other side of the world when this was a thing. Uh, but I've got a lovely radio for you guys today. This is, but it has been sent to me by one of my viewers. Um, it's a lovely AM radio and it is the Craig 4103 Deluxe Quick Mount Mobile Citizens Band Transceiver. They really don't make boxes like this anymore. So anyway, let's just flip over the back and have a look. There we go. That's the uh, picture of it on the back and all of the uh, controls. Now what, what I was particularly uh, really quite uh, pleased to see was this really like rather nice you'll see when I power this up channel display here in the knob that shows the channel displayed as you tune it and I've not seen it on any other radio now this is absolutely mint and um, I'm going to be very very careful with it the guy who sent it to me for a tune up it's not working quite as it was uh, when he first got it so we're going to uh, take it out of the box get it on the bench and uh, go through a, a setup I think it might need some new capacitors it, it is of that age of course and uh, I think that might be all that's wrong with it but uh, let's uh, let's break it out of this box and uh, see what's inside and uh, this only has 23 channels, slightly unusual, I guess. It was one of the early radios that came out in this uh, of this type. And it only had the 23 channels there, not the full 40 that they were allocated over there in the States at the time. But none nonetheless, it's a, a really, really nice uh, example of the radio. So um, let's uh, whip the top off here. Um, it's got that very, uh, very old-fashioned smell old-fashioned electronic smell anyone that's got old radios will know the sort of smell I mean it's a sort of a sweet a kind of a sweet smell it's hard to put your finger on it um, but look at that that's um, that genuinely is a coffin like a stubby coffin isn't it and it has the sliding bracket um, a of the Midland radios here so you fix that into your vehicle and uh, then you can just pull and push this out by releasing those clips and there's a little look at the controls on the front. The S meter, which is lovely. I mean, you don't see them like that these days. And then this illuminated channel selector switch for your 23 channels. Now, this is in very, very good condition. I, I have seen these turn up occasionally uh, from time to time. The power is connected to this uh, plate assembly here through the back there. You see that clip. So then uh, the radio is instantly powered on as you slide it in and out, which is really nice. It means you don't have to disconnect this radio as you would have done uh, with all the other radios. I've not seen this feature on a CB radio. I've seen it on uh, on other radios, but not on a CB radio. And yeah, you've got your PA in your extension speaker socket there and your PL259 socket there for your antenna. So, Let's um, get some power onto this and see what it looks like. Okay, so there it is on the inside. As you can see, it is absolutely pristine, absolutely immaculate. Um, uh, you won't, you really won't see. I mean, this is a very, very old design there, the crystal section here, and the uh, the channel selector switch. I mean, look at the multi wafered switch there on the channel selector. Um, we've got the modulation transformer out the back there. The edge connector and there's also this is the SWR bridge section for the SWR meter it doesn't actually look like there's too many uh, capacitors that look too stressed um, you know it looks it doesn't look like it's had a lot of use but that being said um, the uh, you know just the age of the capacitors within this would, would probably uh, be reason enough for them to go uh, the combination of use and age, of course, is what affects them. You can see more clearly now the uh, the SWR bridge there, and a very very clean PCB. Uh, I can't see that there's been any work done to the rear of that. I will give that a little bit of a clean up gently, um, but um, there may well be looking at that. There may well be a dry joint in amongst those. So we will have a good look and. Uh, I'm going to put this camera on charge now. I'm going to have something to eat and then we'll come back and power it up. Right, I've got the circuit diagram printed off and what I have noticed straight away looking at the circuit diagram is uh, if we look down here at the power section where the power comes in there, the 13.8 uh, volts, there is no diode protection on this radio. So if you get the power around the wrong way, 
you're going to do some damage here. There is none. There's no diode protection. So I'm actually going to, before I even power this up, we're actually going to pop a diode on the back of the socket here for uh, for the customer because um, that you know that's a major problem. And I, I'll do it nice and neat. And should anyone need to remove it or want to switch it back to original, they can. But why you'd want to take safety out, I don't know. And luckily, thanks to cbtricks.com, which is a fantastic website, we also have a service manual for this radio as well, which has got the transmitter alignment and the receiver alignment. Now, I was going to actually, I had worked out all of the components anyway, but this is lovely now. We have a proper service manual uh, online. You can't always get these, so um, if you do take on any work, or if you do fancy a little dabble at doing this yourself, it's always worth checking. I didn't uh, with this one because I'm quite used to uh, tuning and setting up AM rigs. So I wasn't um, too overly concerned. Although I'm not fully geared up uh, for AM, I can do it. It just takes a bit more work. So there we go. That's great. I'm going to add that diode in and then we'll switch it on. And there you go. Literally for the cost of a one penny diode. Uh, you can potentially save the radio from destruction. It's not like you're going to pop to Moonrakers and get another one of these radios if it uh, if you blow it up, and it'd be very expensive to get it repaired. So um, I'm sure the uh, customer will be fine with that. It doesn't detract from it in any way, of course, and can be removed very simply. So um, well, now I feel a bit more safe about uh, plugging the power in because it's easily done. Um, you know when you. On the bench, and uh, I've not done it. I've not done it myself, but I know it is easily done. Uh, reversing the power lead, you only need a bit of a distraction, and uh, away you go. Uh, like I say, we run these on a current limiting power supply. If you are in the market for one, I just I can definitely recommend this one. It's in there, but it's the um, it's quite a popular one. A lot of folks use. It's the Hanama Tech HM310. It's the same make as my oscilloscope. And it really is a fantastic current limiting power supply. So uh, if you're in the market for one, I can really recommend those. And they're, they're not that expensive. You can get them at all the usual places. Okay, there's the radio on switched on. And uh, look at that um, modulation meter. Absolutely fantastic, eh? And uh, nice to see the uh, at least those two functioning nicely. And that is, I think you'll have to agree, really unusual, isn't it, that dial? It's... Um, it's it's more indicative actually of some of a sort of design feature, maybe from the 60s rather than 70s really. But um, perhaps that's what they were aiming for with this—a bit of a sort of a throwback look, even in the sort of 1970s when it was uh, first brought out. So um, yeah, um, now we've got it on the bench, we can uh, uh, see what it sounds like. So just plug the extension speaker in and drive the signal into it, and see what uh, see what we can see. And look at that, look how lovely that is. I, uh, I thought uh, that was a fuse. <laughs> it's actually the, the backlight bulb for the meter. Check that out. How sweet, huh? You definitely wouldn't uh, be replacing that with an LED, but um, quite where you'd get a bulb like that from, I'm not sure. You might have to uh, perhaps put one of those interior lamp bulbs out of a car in there somehow, if that went, but... Um, that would be probably what you'd have to do. I wouldn't think you could get those anymore, but I could be wrong. <laughs> okay. And we've got some uh, some static on there. With our uh, squelch working. And our uh, channel selector switch there. Really great that, isn't it? Okay, so let's put it somewhere, what are we, we've got 23 channels, so let's just stick it down on uh, channel 11 and uh, we'll do all our tests within that section. Okay, I'm assuming without checking it's the first 23 AM channels, uh, we will check that of course. Okay, using the President Randy set to AM on channel 11, just do a quick test. One two three four five five four three two one testing. So right, well, you can see it's uh, certainly receiving audio okay, and uh, we're getting that coming through the extension speaker really nice. So that's great, and the uh, the meter appears to be working fine on there. Fantastic. 
Okay, now using the Craig microphone, we'll just check the modulation meter. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Testing, one, two, three, four, five. And power wise, one, two, one, two. One, two, we're just shy of the four watts there. One, two. I can see the diodes clipping the one, two, the power there when I uh, go over the top. So they appear to be working and we've got uh, transmitted audio there. Uh, on the president, that little bit of a buzz, I always get that on AM when I'm testing. So we'll we'll do a, a, an on-air test with this, of course. One, two. So that looking, that's looking reasonable. I'm um, looking at the SDR. One, two, three, four, one, two. Testing channel eleven. Yeah, it's absolutely on frequency as well. So um, hopefully not a lot needed here. Uh, a general tune-up. A uh, little bit of a tweak, really. And so checking through my emails, the customers. Um, problem with this radio it worked fine from new and he's, he's even uh, did a video on it on his YouTube channel I'll put a link in the description uh, to that um, but what he had noticed after it had been left on for a while was that the receive sensitivity had dropped right down on it and he said he had a problem uh, chatting to a, a friend that he normally chats with and his signal was very very low with low modulation um, I mean, just off the bat here, the modulation seems fine in terms of uh, the transmitted modulation uh, that I'm experiencing off the radio here. Uh, we will do a test, like I say, with Mick, but um, we'll just test test the sensitivity and uh, and see what it's like. But what we'll, I think, do then is just check it against, as we've got the proper service uh, manual for this, we'll, we'll check it up against the, the service manual and just check and adjust it uh, as necessary. According to the uh, the manual, the service manual, the receiver sensitivity is supposed to be better than 0.5 microvolts for 10 decibel synad. Okay, so, um, but bearing in mind this radio is getting on for being as old as I am, so uh, if it doesn't do that, um, <laughs> you know, I think we can forgive it, can't we? But uh, certainly if it's noticeable, if it's a noticeable drop-off uh, that uh, customer has, has, has noticed, then uh, we'll, we'll hopefully be able to address that. Right, it is very, very definitely down. It's doing uh, for 10 decibel synad. It's doing 12 microvolts. <laughs> so yes, that has uh, it, it's developed a certain deafness. That is for sure. Okay, so what I'll do because I don't, I don't want to align things unnecessarily. I'm quite happy to transmit power is okay on this. Uh, I will check it against the service manual, but. We'll tackle the things that need tackling first. So let's uh, let's look at what the service manual says. Re the receiver setup, and uh, we'll go through that first. Okay. So the first step on receive is to adjust L1, L2, and T1 and T2 in that sequence. There was nothing gained there on that adjustment at all uh, and the next step is to adjust 103, 104, 105 for maximum audio output. We'll do that on the oscilloscope uh, with a much larger signal in just so we can peak those before we start to investigate what the real problem is there with receive. Okay, slightly uh, old fashioned way of drawing these symbols on the circuit diagram here but we're going to look at C114 here within the, uh, it's just prior to the noise blanker section in the first mixer. That's the first electrolytic capacitor the signal will encounter. Uh, vis visually, it doesn't look like it's got too stressed, um, but we, there it is there. We will actually uh, remove it and test it and replace it if required. I don't think this one's too much of a problem. It's 13.9 microfarads uh, on the tester. Uh, I will pop a new capacitor in there though, uh, just simply because of its age. In fact, looking at the underside of the capacitor, if I can just get this to focus here, you can see it's actually starting to uh, leak. You see that white powder that's coming out of the base of it there. So sometimes even if they sort of more or less test okay, a visual inspection, normally they're receding plastic around the cap there as a sign as is the actual uh, internals of the capacitor starting to leak which is what we're seeing there. Right as I said to you before I'm, I haven't got an AM uh, signal generator so I'm using this function generator 
um, which does work after a fashion and it works fine, produces the signal and then we run the signal through a, a decade resistance box basically, um, just there. And we've now got a suitable signal um, and I think we've got pretty good sensitivity off of this. I've changed all of the capacitors in the receive line, realigned the front end and it does seem to be absolutely fine. Um, uh, as an example, we've got the President Randy 3 here, and this is the signal into it. And this same signal is doing 10 decibel sign add there on the meter. And we're getting over 12 with this radio. So, I mean, it's probably no surprise to anyone that this is more sensitive than the President Randy because the Randys are a walkie talkie. But um, um, that's a kind of yardstick that I can really measure it with now uh, at the moment. And there you go, there's the exact same signal. Uh, through the Craig and that's uh, that's much better much clearer uh, for the same signal level that was going into the Randy and um, so we now got the uh, 455 tone going into the base of Q104 and then we're going to adjust these three for maximum amplitude on the scope right to adjust the transmit power it's doing pretty close to 4 watts but it's 5 um, 6, 7, 8 and 11 and then you just L110 I say adjust your coil, Mr Coil Stretcher to get your 4 watts and you do all that with no modulation so um, I'm not going to uh, go through that because it's pretty boring I'm just going to do that off camera and then uh, we'll come back and check the power on the meter right, prior to adjustment it's doing 3 watts with no modulation so we'll see if we can improve on that. There we go, a little bit of adjustment and a little bit of coil stretching. We're up to uh, bang on 4 watts and the radio is pulling 0.9 of an amp to do that. So uh, TX power wise we're looking good. To adjust the uh, S meter for TX power, that's R190 down there. Again I'll do that one off camera, but we want it to be uh, in the strawberry patch as they say. Um, it's just a good excuse to look at this uh, lovely meter there, so we'll get it into the uh, the 4 watt range there on the meter. Right, I've got my uh, noise detector here, and we're just going to check um, the diodes out in the uh, second IF stage here. And I'm getting a mix of the signal, but a, a bit of noise, so I'm not sure if they're if they've got an issue I'm going to change them see if I can bring this bring this a bit cleaner because to me they shouldn't be doing that we're picking up a fair bit of noise and distortion so we'll um we'll try changing them see if that helps I have a bag of these little fellas these germanium diodes the one in 60s they're just a standard diode so we'll throw a couple of those in. Just changing the two diodes has brought us up uh, a couple of dB uh, nearer to 8 so we're not far off the uh, 12 dB point which we've got the T800 set out here so um, might uh, change a couple more of those diodes in the circuit uh, where we've got them uh, just to see if that can just uh, drop the noise down a little bit more. I'm really happy this radio is now in spec on receive um, one thing with older AM radios, which you will find, and this one is no different, is you do have to allow the radio to warm up before you do any tests. Normally about 15 minutes, uh, because the reception on this one does improve uh, by a couple of uh, dB after it's been left to warm up for a couple of minutes. So uh, that is something to note. Uh, however, what I've got here is um, I've got a, a switch here where we can switch between T800 and this radio so I can show you the difference between the two in terms of audio signal quality and there really isn't a great deal of difference at all and this is a very sensitive radio on AM as well so um, let me just show you that first all right so we've got the Craig here and I think we're putting out um, well by my calculation we're putting out uh, just slightly under one microvolt here it's hard to gauge because I'm using a I haven't got an AM uh, signal generator, but I, am, I have got one, sorry, but I'm using this one uh, through a, a decade resistance box. And also these are very leaky as well, so um, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a guesstimate. This is why I've put this radio next to it so we can do a comparison, but it's still nonetheless, I think, okay. 
And there's the signal there. And on the Synad meter, that's giving us our 10 dB Synad, which is the reference for this radio. So that's what it sounds like. You can hear that tone in the background there. So now we'll swap over to the T800. Just pop the, uh, the lead in there. Okay, and it's a little bit better and it's slightly over 12 dB sign out there. Okay, I don't get a great uh, signal between me and Mick on AM. AM isn't brilliant uh, around me locally, lots of noise. Um, so we'll see how this works. Um, I'll put a call out for Mick on the T800. Hi there Mick, I wonder if you're about. I'm using the T800 here in AM mode, pushing about three and a half watts. Uh, I wonder how it sounds to you. Um, like I say, we don't have the best signal between each other on AM, but uh, I wonder how this sounds, Rog. Yeah, hello, Paul. This is Mick here. Uh, doing some testing. Uh, I'm just going to go to the T800 in AM mode. Right, okay, we're, we're now switched over to the Craig 4103 and we'll try Mick on this. Hi there Mick, uh, I'm now using the Craig 4103. It originally had a problem with low receive from the customer and I think we've sorted that out now. It certainly seems to be working fine and uh, I wonder how you copy me there. Yeah, receiving you absolutely great there, Mick, and uh, you sound a lot clearer on this radio than you do on the T800. I know I'm going through the external speaker, but um, it's a nice crisp sound. I've not um, set the, uh, the, it's got a noise limiter uh, on this, I've not set that up, but it sounds absolutely great. And even though the signal to noise ratio is better on the T800, you're actually much more readable on this radio. So I often say that to people on the videos that um, don't always go on the sign ad readings, uh, actually do a rig check as well, Roger D. Okay, right, what we're going to do, we're going to just do you an audio test mix way. Mick is going to record the audio at his end to see what it sounds like. Okay, Mick, if you want to press record now and we'll see what the audio sounds like. This is a uh, test, a test of the Craig 40. Okay, if you want to stop the recording there, Mick, we'll try the T800. Stand by. Okay, as a direct comparison, uh, we've got the Thunderpole T800 here in AM mode. Uh, and as I mentioned previously, in fact, the receive on the Craig is better. It sounds much better and clearer than on the T800. Even though the sign out reading was better on the T800. So there you go. But both radios are sensitive on AM. And uh, uh, this uh, radio obviously is dual band FM and AM whereas the Craig is AM only, and the good 40 odd years older than the T800. So I think the, uh, the Craig has done really, really well. Uh, I just want to, I'd be nice to obviously give the viewers a, uh, a listen to see the difference between the two sets, uh, but uh, I, I certainly know which one I would have if I was after a nice sounding AM radio, and it's uh, definitely the, the Craig. Yeah, there's no more here on the T800 now, and I'm on the T800. Sounds very well, sounds good to me, so uh, yes, it's what the kit 
as it should be. But it just shows you the difference between the, the, the two radios and hardly any at all on what was received at my end. So, uh, 40 years versus a new one, well, it's uh, your choice. Really is a thing of beauty. And, um, yeah, if, you'd, if if uh, if anyone has got a nice one of these that they want to uh, part with, I'll certainly take it off your hands if the money's right. And uh, I've tested the SWR meter function; that all works fine. I did that into the dummy load, and uh, so we'll try Mick for one one last time. Well then, Mick. Oh, I better turn this one off. Look. Right, I'm uh, back with the Craig. Uh, I uh, <coughs> say the, there is a bit of a difference in uh, in in um, the audio quality this end. It's much much nicer on the Craig, and like I say, we've got the uh, modulation light lighting up here on the needle, and the needle moving, uh, which of course you don't get on a FM radio. So that's always nice to see a good check as well. But um, thanks for your help today, Mick. I say and. Uh, I say this uh, certainly would be worthy of a place on anyone's shelf. This radio, they when they say they don't make them like this anymore, they really don't. Yeah, it looks really nice. The uh, phone you sent over to me it was uh, a really nice radio. <laughs> I'd, uh, I think I'd be bidding you against you on that one. Yeah, Rog, indeed. Okay, right with that then, I'll uh, I'll bid the uh, viewers adieu. It's been a, a slightly longer video than I had intended, but uh, I knew that some of the viewers, particularly our American viewers that may well have even owned this radio back in the day, uh, would have liked to have seen it. So uh, with that, I'd like to thank Mick for the help here, and uh, many thanks uh, to the viewer for sending me for this, this for repair, because it's been a, a joy to work on, and I'll get it back off to him safely in the post. We'll catch you later. Thanks for watching if you have been. Take care.